The Bombyx mori no longer exists in the wild. It's a small, light brown moth. It has a wingspan of four centimeters, and its larvae are tan caterpillars with horned tails. But the Bombyx mori's greatest claim to fame is its more common name, the silkworm, and it's the key to making silk. I'm Nova. Well, that's not my real name. It's actually my alias. You are listening to On the Ear, the official podcast channel of the Hanford High Podcast Club. Now let's get to the silk. Silk. It's shiny and soft. It looks and feels like luxury. This smooth textile is used in everything from clothes to pillowcases to wallpaper. The discovery of silk was recorded by Confucius, or Kongzi. Confucius lived in China around 500 BCE. He was a well-known philosopher and politician. The legend starts in 2700 BCE in Neolithic China. The semi-legendary empress Lei Tzu was having tea beneath a mulberry tree when a bombix mori cocoon dropped into her cup. The empress fished out the cocoon from her cup and she found that the heat had caused the cocoon to unravel and turn into a thin, pearly filament. She shared her discovery with her husband, the Yellow Emperor Huangdi. He encouraged her to study the life cycle of the silkworm. After making careful observations, Empress Lei Tzu convinced the emperor to gift her a grove of mulberry trees. She planned to raise and harvest her own silkworms, and this practice is now known as sericulture. Empress Lei Tzu is also credited for the invention of the silk reel and the silk loom. In Chinese folk culture, Lei Tzu is the goddess of silk. She earned herself the name Xi Ling Shi, Lady of the Silkworm. The legend of Empress Lei Tzu took place in 2700 BCE. However, archaeologists have found evidence of sericulture from even earlier times. A silkworm cocoon was found in Sanxi province, near the Yellow River. It had seemingly been cut in half with a sharp knife. The cocoon dated back to about 4,000 to 3,000 BCE. Rough silk looms were found in Zhejiang province. They dated back to 3,000 BCE. And the earliest evidence of silk fabric was found in Henan province, a hearth of ancient Chinese civilization. It dated back to 3630 BCE. The fabric was a scrap of silk used to wrap a child's body. Sericulture, the art of raising silkworms, was a heavily guarded secret. It was kept in China for over 2000 years. However, silk fibers dating back to 2450 BCE have been found in India. These discoveries suggest that sericulture was not exclusive to ancient China. In ancient China, the silkworm farming industry was restricted to women. Its shimmering appearance and labor-intensive processing made it popular among the wealthy and elite. Soon, this luxurious fabric was restricted to just the emperor and the highest dignitaries. Silk was kept in these upper circles for about 1,000 years. Eventually, though, silk began to spread to the people. Sericulture was carefully guarded in China. However, silk itself was exported and traded in foreign countries where it was viewed as a luxury material. In Egypt, silk was found in a tomb in the Valley of Kings. It dated back to 1070 BCE. The Greeks, and then the Romans, wrote of what they called Serica, the easternmost country of Asia and homeland of the Ceres, the people of the silk. In 200 BCE, during the Han Dynasty, Silk was even used as a currency. Farmers paid taxes in grain and silk. Salaries and payments were also made in silk. Silk was an important trade commodity outside of China too. And the Silk Road opened. It was an important trade route, traveling through China, the Middle East, and the Mediterranean. Soon, 
silk took the world by storm. It was an immensely popular item. In the Roman Empire, silk was so popular that large amounts of gold were lost to the purchase of it. The Silk Road became an important and influential trade route. It connected the known world and shared not only the coveted textile it was named after, but also information, technologies, and resources. Up to then, China held an almost perfect monopoly on silk. Exporting silkworms or silkworm eggs from the country was punishable by death. However, a Japanese expedition in 300 CE captured four Chinese girls and some silkworm eggs. The girls were forced to pass on the knowledge of sericulture to their captors. Another legend tells of a Chinese princess in 400 CE. She was married off to a Khotan prince and wanted to have her favorite fabric easily available. The princess hid silkworm eggs and mulberry seeds in her headdress. Yet another legend documents sericulture's journey to Europe. According to the legends, a group of Christian monks smuggled the silkworms out in their hollowed out canes. So, how is silk made? After a female Bombyx mori moth lays her eggs, she dies. The moth lays about 300 to 500 tiny lemon yellow eggs onto a mulberry leaf. The eggs are covered in a protective, sticky, gelatinous goo. After three days, the eggs will change color. If they're infertile, they'll become white. If they're fertile, they'll become black. After about two weeks, tiny black newborn silkworms will emerge. They only eat mulberry leaves and begin to munch away. Then they molt. Shedding their outsides, they emerge as white larvae with horns along their back. The silkworms will molt four more times. Finally, after six weeks, they stop eating and get ready to start spinning. The silkworms attach to a tree and start spinning in figure eights. They spin hundreds of thousands of times over the course of three to eight days. The silkworm produces a single strand of silk. This strand is up to 900 meters long. In nature, the silkworms will emerge by releasing enzymes that create a hole in the strand. When silkworms are harvested for silk filling, this hole is fine. However, when silkworms are harvested for fabric, this hole is problematic as it reduces the values of the silk threads. So, in traditional cultivated silk, the cocoons are boiled, killing the silkworm and unraveling the thread. That thread is then carefully reeled into individual long threads and washed with soap and boiling water. Then the thread is dyed. Lastly, the thread is spun and woven, and there you have it, silk. Silk is a fabric with a rich history. It has traveled and clothed and connected the world. And now you know all about it. Thanks for listening to On the Ear, the official podcast channel of Hanford High School Podcast Club. Please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel for more podcasts. This is Nova, signing off.